Ventilator mode classification. Breath sequence. Ventilator mode classification, breath sequence, is part two of a four-part series on the classification of mechanical ventilation. This lecture was adopted from the following journal order, article. Classification of ventilator modes, update and proposal for implementation by Robert Chatburn. Now, ventilator mode classification scheme, there are main components. Uh, one is the breathing pattern, one's control type. In the previous presentation, I went over the primary breath control variables, which is a component with the breathing pattern. I will be describing breath sequence in this presentation. Um, just as a reminder, I'm going to be summarizing the primary breath control variables from the last lecture. Uh, primary control variables. There are three primary breath control variables. Volume, pressure, and dual control. The control variable is defined by what m remains constant when the ventilator experiences changes in the imposed workload. The ventilator can only control one variable at a time during inspiration. However, it can switch between variables during a single inspiratory phase. Uh, breath sequence. This presentation I'll be going over continuous spontaneous ventilation, or CSV, continuous mandatory ventilation, CMV, intermittent mandatory ventilation, IMV, or IMV with an active exhalation valve. First, with continuous spontaneous ventilation, we ask a couple questions. Are mandatory breaths allowed during the breathing phase? Are all the breaths spontaneous? And one thing to point out is the spontaneous breaths may be assisted, either by pressure support or another form of assistance. Now this first slide demonstrates continuous spontaneous ventilation and a great example of that is just CPAP. And here's a patient breathing on approximately five centimeters of water CPAP. The patient controls their whole inspiratory phase and as you notice with CPAP there are no mandatory breaths allowed. All breaths are spontaneous. This next slide is going to demonstrate this is the Hamilton Medical G5 simulator that's available online. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the patient out in a control mode and then switch to a pure spontaneous mode and show the differences. So we're going to start the simulation. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the mode to spontaneous. And I'm going to confirm it. And we're going to look at the waveforms here. The yellow is my pressure waveform, and the pink is my flow waveform. I'm going to start having the patient spontaneously breathe. And we can look at the dynamic lung tool and look for diaphragm action underneath here, where my pointer is pointing, to show when spontaneous breaths are initiated. Now with my simulation, you notice my patient is starting to spontaneously breathe by the pink firing of the diaphragm. And you'll notice my waveforms, they start to change. So all breaths are controlled by the patient with the inspiratory phase and the expiratory phase, the timing. And there's no mandatory breaths during the breathing phase. 
Second, we're gonna look at continuous mandatory ventilation, or CMV. And one of the questions we can ask when looking at the ventilator waveforms, are spontaneous breaths allowed between mandatory breaths? And one thing to think of is there can be spontaneous initiation of breaths. However, every inspiration is a mandatory breath. So even though the patient initiates the breath, the set bre the breath that's going to be delivered is going to be a set volume or pressure for a fixed time. So I'm going to use the simulator again. And we're starting in a controlled mode of ventilation. And as you notice my settings, I have an inspiratory time of 1.2 seconds, a square flow wave pattern, so I'm a volume targeted mode, and I'm just changing my patient. I'm going to have my patient start to initiate spontaneous breathing. And what we're going to look at for our examples is our flow waveform and also our pressure waveform in yellow. Now the patient spontaneous initiated a spontaneous breath indicated by the diaphragm and our dynamic lung tool. And we can notice the scooping in the waveform. So even during our spontaneous breaths, our flow remains constant. This is volume control ventilation. And even though our spontaneous breaths are initiated by the diaphragm, it's for a fixed flow rate or fixed volume for a fixed amount of time. So my mandatory breaths are for a certain fixed volume and fixed time and is my spontaneous breaths. Even though they're initiated by the patient, it's going to be for a fixed amount of flow for a fixed amount of time. So this is a good example of CMV. Next, we're going to look at intermittent mandatory ventilation, or IMV. And what we want to ask or we want to look for are spontaneous breaths allowed between mandatory breaths. And many practitioners consider IMV to be a partial ventilatory support. So this is an IMV mode we have right here and we're gonna look at triggering, the patient triggering with these dips in our flow waveform. So we have these flow deviations and you notice our spontaneous breaths are much different. So I'm just gonna go back to that actually and play it again. So here's my mandatory breath, here's my spontaneous breath, and it looks much different. So this patient can inhale or exhale for their own time constant. Next we're going to look at IMV with the active exhalation valve. And what we want to look for when we're assessing the waveforms are spontaneous breaths allowed within mandatory breaths. And IMV with the active exhalation valve, this is considered an open breathing systems. And this can only be happening during a pressure-based breath or pressure-targeted breath. So a good example of this is biphasic ventilation or bilevel ventilation. So this screenshot just shows a typical pressure control breath. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to freeze the screen and to get a gray background to show 
my baseline so it showed differences um, when I changed my inspiratory time. So it's grayed out so we should see what our baseline started at. And I'm going to change the inspiratory time and I'm going to really lengthen it out to show the differences. So here's my second breath phase. I'm going to start to lengthen the inspiratory time. So I'm starting to lengthen it out. I'm making it at about a 4 to 1 inverse ratio. So it's easy to see that spontaneous breaths are allowed within mandatory breaths. As you can see from the waveforms, the patient is breathing indicated by these flow distortions and you can see that uh, during the pressure waveform they're actually breathing inside the mandatory breath phase. So we have the flow distortions and I'm just going to take out and redo it here so it makes it pretty dynamic the changes. So another example of this would be airway pressure release ventilation. So the patient can breathe on two levels of pressure, a high level of pressure and a low level of pressure. You can see all the flow distortions and the patient's actually breathing during the mandatory phase. So this is IMV with an active exhalation valve. In summation, there are three primary breath sequences, CSV, CMV, IMV. During CSV, all breaths are spontaneous, which may be assisted or unassisted. When I refer to assisted, pressure support is an example of assisted spontaneous breath. In CMV, every inspiration is a mandatory breath. No spontaneous breaths are allowed. Spontaneous efforts are allowed. However, it is followed by a fixed pressure or volume for a set amount of time. IMV is regarded as partial ventilatory support where there is both mandatory and spontaneous breaths. Additionally, newer ventilators may incorporate a open breathing system which allows for unhindered spontaneous breaths within mandatory breaths.